What is that? Yeah. Come now, I believe you can answer that question on your own. Robot is hands down one of the most interesting characters from the Invincible universe, and you're about to find out why in this video, where we tell you everything you need to know about Robot. As a reminder, there will be major spoilers ahead in this video. You have been warned. Robot's beginnings. Robot is the superhero alter ego of a man named Rudolph Connors. Contrary to what the rest of the world believed, Robot isn't actually a cybernetic hero. Instead, he's a deformed genius living inside a vat while remotely controlling, well, a crime-fighting robot. In fact, the secret won't come to light until later on in Invincible's story, because in the beginning, everyone just thought that Robot was, in fact, the mechanical super superhero, nothing more and nothing less. He started his superhero career as the team captain of the teen team, Earth's premier junior crime fighting clique. It's here that Robot would meet the half Viltrumite superhero known as Invincible, aka Mark Grayson, and it would be the beginning of a long and complicated relationship between the two. Robot's tenure with the teen team was nothing especially notable. He and his fellow superheroes fought crime as you would expect, facing off against the likes of the Mahler twins and David Hiles. Eventually, Robot would leave and disband the teen team when he gets drafted to join the world's number one superhero team, the Guardians of the Globe. Robot in the Big Leagues Robot's eventual inception into the Guardians of the Globe stems mainly from the original Guardian's death at the hands of Omni-Man, who at this point was revealed to actually be a Viltrumite agent aiming to conquer the world. As a testament to just how well regarded Robot was, is the fact that Cecil Stedman, head of the Global Defense Agency and basically the Guardian's big boss, didn't just draft him as a member, he was immediately installed as as the new team's leader. His first objective, hold auditions for this all new Guardians of the Globe. He'd ultimately form a team composed of other heroes like Shrinking Ray, Duplicate, Rexplode, Black Samson, and most important of them all, Monster Girl. Now, this new team wasn't exactly championship material right from the get-go. In fact, the Guardians of the Globe would eventually experience a soft rebuild after this robot assembled team failed to meet the expectations of the GDA after a couple of alien invasions that saw the team ultimately prevailing but at the cost of billions of dollars in property damage and scores of civilian lives lost. The first step towards this further retooled Guardians of the Globe was having Cecil draft a superhero named Bulletproof into the team to bolster their performance on the field. Now at this point in Invincible's story, we get to see Robot form a friendship with Monster Girl that would ultimately become one of the most poignant and tragic storylines of the entire series. It all started when Bulletproof reported Monster Girl for her inappropriate behavior towards him. She might look like a kid, but she's actually actually a woman in her late 20s and she was basically harassing Bulletproof. Robot would then confront her and he'd find out that Monster Girl is hiding the fact that she de-ages every time she uses her powers. Robot commiserates with her and vows to help Monster Girl find a way to remove the side effects of her powers. And there you go, Robot was in. Friendship formed and it would eventually blossom into a whirlwind romance between the two. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, the addition of Bulletproof to the Guardian still proved insufficient for them to live up to the world's expectations, so Cecil drafts the Immortal, an original Guardian discovered to be alive to act as this new team's advisor. Still, this wasn't enough for Robot's team to be effective in their efforts, and he'd ultimately get his leadership status revoked, with the Immortal replacing him. Still, Robot would remain on the team, albeit simply as a member. Robot, the Maverick. After being demoted, Robot, to his credit, still performed his duties as Guardians of the Globe effectively. In fact, some of the members even thought that he was much more suitable as a leader for the team instead of the Immortal, especially after their encounter with the supervillain Machine Head, which left Bulletproof and Black Samson hospitalized. And it's at this point that the series finally reveals that Robot isn't actually a robot, as we discover that he's this super deformed dude inside a vat and the cybernetic body he's been using was actually a drone that he controlled remotely. But remember, no one else knew this at the time, and as for Rudolph himself, well he's got plans, and they're big plans. Robot starts started focusing his attention on helping Monster Girl at this point in time. First, he tried crafting a suit based on the one Black Samson is using with the hope that it will stop Monster Girl from de-aging, but this would ultimately prove ineffective. All the while, Robot sneakily stole some of Rexplode's DNA 
in order to use it on himself so that he can finally gain a normal human body. In the interim, Robot and the Guardians would face off and defeat an interdimensional supervillain named Omnipotus, and once the short crime-fighting stop was done, Rudolph returned to pursuing his goal of gaining a working physical body. Robot's big reveal. To do this, he bribed the Mahler twins with, well, let's just say a ton of cash in exchange for cloning a human body for him using Rex's stolen DNA. The procedure ultimately worked, with Rudolph transferring his mind to Rex's cloned body. As for the Mahler twins, well, Robot screwed them over. Instead of paying them what was owed, he put them back in prison. Shortly after that, Robot, now in his human body, would show up at the Guardian's base and reveal to everyone that, well, he's actually a dude. Rex found out this whole deal to be freaky considering Rudolph's wearing a younger version of his face, but he gets over it eventually. And it's here that Robot finally reveals his feelings to Monster Girl. He tells her that she was the inspiration for his plan to gain a normal human body, and that he chose Rex because he thought that Monster Girl found him to be attractive. He also vowed to continue finding a way for Monster Girl to properly age. During the aftermath of their encounter with supervillain Doc Seismic, Robot and Monster Girl's relationship would become deeper as the two started going out on some dates. Eventually, they and the Guardians would foil another alien invasion, this time by a race called the Sequids. But almost at the same time, fellow Guardian Duplicate seemingly died at the hands of the Lizard League, which caused a mortal whom she was dating to resign from his post as the team's leader. After this, Cecil reinstalls Robot as the Guardian's leader. And hey, everything seems to be coming up Robot, right? He's the leader again and he's got himself a relationship with Monster Girl. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Wait until what happens next. Robot and company quit. Robot's second tenure as the Guardian's leader would be short-lived because during another encounter with Doc Seismic, which ended with the team having to get rescued by Darkwing and Reanimen after Cecil made some underhanded deals with them. Robot and a few of the other Guardians eventually discover this and they get into a scuffle with Cecil and Reanimen. This would ultimately sour their relationship and he and most of the Guardians would end up leaving the team. Robot and the rest of the ex-Guardians such as Monster Girl, Rexplode, Adam Eve, and Bulletproof would then form their own independent superhero team. Also, Robot would finally find a way to help Monster Girl with her de-aging problem. He gave her a belt that allowed her to transform into her monster form without having to deal with its youth-giving side effect. The Invincible War and Robot's return to the Guardians. Everything was going swimmingly for Robot until an event called the Invincible War arrived in his dimension. Basically, alternate versions of Mark Grayson laid waste to most of the world's largest cities and ultimately resulted in Monster Girl getting injured and Rexplode sacrificing his life to save his friends. In the aftermath, Robot would mourn the loss of a dear friend and ally, and he'd even change his human name to Rex to honor the late superhero. Not long after that, the Sequids tried invading Earth again, but Robot, along with Invincible, would triumph over them. Eventually, Robot and Cecil would reconcile, and he'd rejoin the Guardians of the Globe along with Monster Girl and the others. This time, they were tasked with stopping another alien invasion by the interdimensional race called the Flaxons. This combined the efforts of the world's greatest superheroes would eventually see them repelling successfully the Flaxons, but Robot and Monster Girl would inadvertently become trapped in their homeworld, and this is where Robot, or Rex, or Rudolph, or whatever you want to call him, really comes into his own. Robots rise and fall. Here's the thing, the Flaxon Dimension's time moves much faster compared to Robot and Monster Girl's homeworld, Earth. So when they arrive here, they're basically near immortals, but they weren't treated like gods from the onset. In fact, Robot and Monster Girl basically became slaves in their first couple of decades that they were there. Eventually though, Robot and Monster Girl would mount a rebellion against the Flaxon ruling class and overthrow them. After that, Robot and Monster Girl would rule over the civilization as emperors and empress, respectively. On the surface, everything was going well. Robot thinks he's brought peace to the Flaxen homeworld, and Monster Girl has finally aged properly, now donning a body of a woman proportionate to her real age. They were in power, and they were in love. However, the pressures of ruling over an empire also put a strain on Robot and Monster Girl's relationship. This would estrange Monster Girl, which then led her to finding companionship in the old Flaxen ruling class, who at this point had become the oppressed members of their society. A huge rift would form between Robot and Monster Girl as the former Empress betrays her lover and helps the ruling class take back the throne. It was a success too, as Monster Girl and her newfound friends overthrew an imprisoned Robot. But it ultimately turned out to be a ruse when Monster Girl found out that the old Flaxen nobility were just using her. After reclaiming their throne, they went back to their old ways, murdering citizens and enslaving other dimensions. So Monster Girl helped Robot escape his 
his prison and they led another rebellion that would place their old faction back in power. Again, it's a success, but Robot had gone weary of the power struggles after this, so he and Monster Girl finally decide to go back to their home dimension. Now, Robot and Monster Girl aren't exactly a couple at this point, especially after the whole Game of Thrones-like drama they went through over on the Flaxen dimension. Still, their centuries-long stay in the Flaxen homeworld ultimately turned out to be just a few months in Earth time. Cecil welcomed them back to the Guardians of the Globe and the two resumed their post. In fact, Robot even got a promotion, becoming a superhero coordinator for the entire world not just the Guardians. Their friends and family welcome them back too and hold parties for them. But what's most notable here is that Robot and Monster Girl now hate each other. But this isn't where their story ends. Another Flaxen invasion arrives and it's revealed that the one heading this conquest was Monster Girl's illegitimate son named Monax, one from the affair she had with one of the old Flaxen nobility back when she and Robot's relationship had only just started to sour. In the end though, Robot and Monster Girl would defeat Monax and save the world. Even better, Robot and Monster Monster Girl would finally reconcile and forgive each other for all the crap they put each other through in the Flaxen Dimension. They'd rekindle their relationship and be romantically involved again. Unbeknownst to anyone else at this point in time, Robot has been stewing on the idea of becoming the world's supreme leader, thinking that he's the only one suitable for bringing everlasting peace on Earth. This all came to a head when Invincible asked him for help to locate the supervillain Angstrom Levy in another dimension. Robot instead betrayed his old ally and trapped him in this alternate world before returning to the mainline universe, making sure that Invincible won't be there to stop him from taking over the world. But Invincible eventually manages to find his way back home and tell Cecil what Robot did and what he's planning. Having been found out, Robot kills Cecil and even tries to take Adam Eve hostage to pressure Mark into joining his side. In a ruthless act, Robot severs a pregnant Eve's leg off in this altercation. Mark is forced to retreat when he discovers punching Robot's drone generates a sound wave that triggers Mark's weakness. Invincible tries to stop him a couple of times too, but Mark ultimately backs off when he realizes he's incredibly unmatched against Robot. Robot has beat him. He won. Many would die under Robot's rule, but ultimately Earth thrives under his leadership. He methodically assassinated his old allies such as Black Samson, Shapesmith, and Kid Thor. And it's all scorched Earth from here. Robot would kill everyone, hero and villain alike, to make sure his rule goes uncontested. Monster Girl would find out about her lover's heel turn and Robot would try to convince her to join him too. She'd refuse and Robot would end up nearly killing her when he threw her into the vacuum of space. Well, that's one way to break up with your girlfriend, right? Anyway, Robot might have become a ruthless tyrant at this point, but he's still a lover boy deep inside. He discovers that Monster Girl survived and is under the care of the Viltrumites who have settled on the moon at this point. He pays them a visit and talks with Nolan Grayson, now the emperor of the Viltrumite Empire, and strikes a deal with them wherein they'd let the Viltrumites replenish their population by crossbreeding with humans and in exchange, they won't interfere with Robot's plans to rule over Earth. About five years would pass before Robot and Invincible would cross paths again. They'd help each other stop Thrag, the former region of the Viltrumites, but in no way did this change anything between them. At this point, Mark has become the new emperor of the Viltrumites, and when Robot realizes that Mark could be a threat to his rule, he decides to gather a bunch of Earthborn Viltrumite soldiers to kill him. In the response to this, Mark forms an alliance with the rest of Earth's remaining superheroes, Monster Girl included, and they get into an all-out war. During the battle, they are able to determine that Robot is piloting one of his drones. Mark is able to figure out which drone it is and fly out into space away from the fray so he can't communicate with his other drones. Robot taunts Invincible and tells him that he could kill him, but if he does, he'll lose all the progress he made, changing the Earth for the better into his utopia. Mark would ultimately get the better of Robot and neutralize the tyrant by killing his physical body but leaving his mind alive. Mark kept Robot's brain alive to allow for Robot to still communicate his plans and be helpful but not connected to any systems that would allow him to become a threat again. In the end, Robot becomes a sentient brain who's a prisoner deep within the Global Defense Agency base, trapped in an all too familiar jail, a big old vat. Even the brain of Robot agrees this is for the best. 